I'm here with Mark Grover, a software engineer at Cloudera. He's a committer on Apache Big Top and a contributor to Apache Hadoop, Hive, Scoop, and Flume. He also contributed to O'Reilly's Programming Hive title. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Larry. So, Mark, a lot of what you spend your time doing revolves in and around the Hadoop ecosystem. Right. So give everyone an overview of, of the environment and why someone would want to use these tools and be involved in that environment. Right. So Hadoop started off from uh, a couple open source papers that Google published around 2004. And they were around scalable processing of data. So, and, and this processing can be done on commodity hardware. So you don't have to go out and buy expensive machinery to run and mine your data. You can run them on just bare metal machines that are not specialized in any shape, or form. So a lot of what we see happening in the Hadoop ecosystem today is mining this data on clusters of machine in a very scalable fashion. And recently what has happened is a whole lot of layers have come up on top of Hadoop. These are components like Hive or Impala and Search where you can use these components to have a higher level of abstraction when you mine the data that's present in Hadoop. Mm -hmm. uh, Hadoop today has applications in finance and marketing and advertising and manufacturing um, and in healthcare. And it has completely changed the way we look at data and the way we mine it and the way we make use of the information that comes from the data. Right, so we've heard today that there's just so much data out there, terabytes and terabytes right. of data. Right. So are, are these solutions for large amounts of data? So is the big data solution available for this tool set? Absolutely, yeah. So Hadoop was uh, invented with a frame of mind saying that we have examples of companies like Google and Facebook and LinkedIn that are going to generate massive, massive amounts of data. And the existing infrastructure at that time was just not capable of handling those kinds of data. Uh, so Hadoop is definitely a step in the direction where we go from a phase where we're very being conservative about the data. We were being nitty-gritty, taking out things and artifacts and fields that we didn't need from the data uh, because it was very, very expensive to store the entirety of the data. With Hadoop, we have moved into an era where we're taking all the data, regardless of how structured or unstructured it is, putting it in a single store, which is Hadoop, right. and being able to make the best out of every single piece of information that's present in that data. So you've mentioned sort of a cost issue, where this right. is a more economical solution. Right. So it, does the cost really matter? Is it just a better solution? Or if you have all, you know, if you have the money to invest, would right. you choose a different solution? Right. I would say the cost plays an important role in this conversation because of the scale. Uh, when you look at the cost of storing a petabyte of data, uh, it's comprised of the cost of storing a thousand terabytes of data. Mm -hmm. And with historical systems, this cost of storing a terabyte has been very high. When you look out to scale, cost becomes an important factor. Now cost is, like you pointed out, cost is not the only thing to look right, out for. Right. It's one of the factors. The other factor is, what we noticed was more and more data in the planet today is unstructured. Mm -hmm. These are videos, so these dirty are data, logs. Clean exactly. data. Clean exactly. data is a huge right. issue, right? Yeah, absolutely. So about, I have heard statistics that say about 80% of our data is unstructured, which means it's not present in simple rows and columns. It's present in, in text, in videos, and images. And if you had to do something with that data, you also need a system that's flexible. So cost is important, but also flexibility. What Hadoop provided was a cheaper solution uh, on a per terabyte basis, but also a, a wide variety of variety in terms of flexibility, in terms of what you can store and how you can analyze the data that comes with it. Right, okay. So could you have examples about interesting projects that people are using these tools to right. um, so, store and retrieve and do right. interesting things Absolutely. Like? Uh, it has a lot of applications. Healthcare is the first interesting example that comes from. Uh, one in, in person that I know of is this Cancer Research Institute in Toronto, Canada, called Ontario Institute of Cancer Research. They use Hadoop for sequencing the human genome and then figuring out the mutations to tell what, uh, what characteristics of people are more likely to get cancer of a particular kind. So it's a very noble cause. And it's, it's a cause in the healthcare industry off Hadoop. Another one is 
a branch of the U.S. government trying to prevent suicides and figure out uh, the, the rate of suicide for a veteran who comes back from war mm-hmm. by using certain data about the veteran and their background. Uh, and Hadoop has successfully been used there to prevent or reduce the level, identify early suspects, wow, and and, and re- retain them from going to a suicide. So really great stuff out there that's happening. Um, so it's working on stuff that matters that Tim talks about all the time right, is, absolutely. Uh, is clear in these applications. So if someone has an application for this stack, how do they get up and running quickly? Where do they start? You know, there's a lot of tools that Apache has, you know, based right. on the fact of all of the work that you're doing with the different tools. Right. Um, wh- where do you go? Right. What do you do? That's a great question. I think this is part of what we do at Cloudera. Uh, Hadoop is an open source project, and there are a lot of vendors out there that are trying to make a Hadoop enterprise ready. Cloudera is definitely one of the, f- one of the vendors at the forefront. Uh, and what they do is they provide support and services on top of Hadoop. But not just it, is it Hadoop, it's a collection, it's an ecosystem on its own with a whole bunch of projects surrounding it. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I were to talk about how someone can actually deploy Hadoop easily, it's with the help of, of the community, it's the, which includes the vendors, it includes enthusiasts, it includes developers. Um, and you, you come out with an ecosystem that's stable, that cares about integration with downstream components and upstream components. It's an ecosystem which cares about what users want, being able to listen to that, keep away from the politics, and being able to deliver uh, consi- consistently and frequently about the demands of our customers. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, so to do that, people usually leverage a vendor. They would they would choose one vendor which will support them through this process and help them deploy their application on top of it. Mm-hmm. So where would they find a vendor? I mean, what would they go out and do? So, so I'm in a situation where my boss assigns me this project. We have a lot of data. Right. It's probably, maybe it's dirty data because I've heard that right. most data is dirty. Right. You know, that, that people in the big data space are spending a lot of time cleaning. Right. right? So what are, what's my first step? How do I find a vendor or how do I do some testing? How do right. I make an assessment? Right. Uh, you, you go out to conferences like these where you get to talk to right, a lot of right. vendors, uh, including myself. Uh, and, and you figure out what it is that you want and how that vendor can help supplement um, and help you make the most out of your data. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's essentially the way uh, every vendor has their own offerings and, uh, and support contracts. Okay. And, and you choose, choose the one that you like okay. the most. So it's an interesting way to sort of poke around and just do a little testing. Sure. You, can you set up sort of an easy solution right. for a do? Yeah, absolutely. So Clouder, I, I can speak on Cloudera's behalf. Okay. Cloudera comes with a, a quick start VM, which is essentially this VM you can download. It has Hadoop and a whole bunch of other components installed on it. You put your data set on it, you write your application, and run it against Hadoop in this virtual environment. Uh, without having to go through the overhead of doing all the manual work of installation and configuring yourself. Okay. Uh, the, the project that powers the demo VM, which is the packaging code, comes from an open source project that I'm a committer on, that's Apache Big Top. Again, that project is something that, in fact, allows people to easily install and configure Hadoop and the related components on their system. So you have uh, the demo VM, you have the distributions that are also very easy to install. They're very well integrated with the operating system that lies underneath. Uh, so you can use one of those demo VMs or you can use the installation via packages, and it's fairly easy to go download this, configure this, and be able to install great. your uh, data solution. set. Yeah. So um, we talked a little bit about the great projects that are being done with Hadoop in some cases. Right. Um, we're here at O'Reilly's Off- OSCON conference where there's a lot of talk about doing good things. So if I'm a developer, or if someone's a developer and they right. want to figure out how to get involved in one of these great Apache projects, right. um, whether it's Hadoop or Big Top or some other of the solutions right. or tools, how would they go about doing that? How do you get started? How right. do you get involved in the community? Because I imagine that a lot of people are maybe tentative or right. don't know how to get started. Right. You know, wh- How do they make that first step? That's a great question. It's a question I was asking myself two years ago. Okay, good. Uh, I think the answer to that question is if you become a user of that project first, there's a very high likelihood that you'll become a contributor to that project real soon. Mm-hmm. It's important to pick up action items that are low-hanging fruit that you feel passionately about. If uh, if there's a particular user issue or a user interface bug that you want to fix, go ahead, 
experience that bug and you will feel strongly about fixing it mm -hmm. contribute a patch start small um, take the help of the community to support you in, in doing that and Hadoop ecosystem is very good at that uh, we are all there to have more people come and contribute Big Top in particular because mm -hmm. I'm a committer there but I have noticed that with many other projects all, all projects in the Hadoop ecosystem are very open to having more contributors so I would say uh, use the project Pick low-hanging fruit. Don't go pick right. big features that you're going to implement by yourself as mm -hmm. your first commit. Uh, and then take help of the community. I mean, if you get stuck, we are here to help. And uh, please come, and we'll be more than happy to help you contribute your first patch and be hopefully become a committer and PMC member on the project. That would be great. Yeah. So we've covered a lot of um, interesting things here, and uh, I really appreciate your time, and thanks so much. Absolutely. My pleasure. All right.